Hi, and welcome to Learn DaVinci Resolve. Today, we're going to check out the Clip Attributes page and show you what it's all about and what all the different settings are for. This is really going to help you out in a number of different areas. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. I'm going to go to my edit page here. I've got a couple of clips selected. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's just play one of these clips here so we can kind of see it. It's, um, let's do this one because this was some Inspire 2 footage filmed at 29.97. So I can double check that, go into my metadata, and I see this is at 29.97 frames per second. So I'm going to go and right click and go to clip attributes. Now, one thing about clip attributes is this menu is going to change its position based on where we're at. So it can get a little confusing trying to find it sometimes, but I'm going to go to clip attributes and I see the video frame rate was 23 or 29.97, but my timeline, let's just double check here. My timeline is 1920 by 1080 at 23.976. So I want to change this to match my timeline. So I'll change this to 23.976, hit OK. And now what I've done is I've slowed it down just a hair. It's hard to notice the difference between 23 and or 24 and 30, but when you're going from 24 from 60 or 120, that's where you're going to see a huge difference. Now let's go back in and go to our clip attributes again and we have data levels. Uh, normally, when um, something is imported, it's going to um, automatically set the data levels. You should never really need to play with this. Uh, I always have it on full. Uh, sometimes auto is going to work, but um, basically I've never had to change this for the type of work that I do. Same with pixel aspect ratio, that if you have a project using a mix of media with different frame sizes, you can assign specific pixel aspect ratios in the pop-up menu here. Um, again, something, all my stuff is always NTSC 16 by 9, so haven't had to worry about it. Same with flipping the image or doing image size presets. Field dominance, uh, by default, the auto setting uh, automatically determines whether a particular clip is upper or lower field dominant. If it's wrong, you can change it. Pretty simple. Uh, again, something I've never had to work with. I'm always working with the same cameras, so never had to deal with it. Uh, enable deinterlacing. Uh, that's only available in the studio version. If um, you need to deinterlace a clip, well, that's how you can do it right there. And alpha mode is going to determine how an alpha channel is handled. It's either going to be none or pre-multiplied. And if you're bringing in an alpha mode or an alpha channel and you don't want it to or you do need it to, there's some ways of doing it. Super scale is a very cool feature. And um, let's see if we can, uh, I'll bring up the spark footage. So the spark footage is 1920 by 1080, which is my timeline uh, resolution here. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. But I could do a 2x, 3x, or 4x super scale. And what super scale does is it uses a completely different algorithm for scaling the footage in size, where I can zoom with the inspector or you know those types of tools to scale up. It's just basically cropping in, and if I'm going too much, then I'm going to lose some image quality very quickly. Using super scale actually increases the resolution uh, with some interesting algorithms. And what I found is it can work really, really good. Uh, keep in mind what you're doing here. If you're trying to, if you take a 4K clip and you accidentally put it on 4X super scale, you're creating a 16K file. And I accidentally did that on my MacBook Pro and totally crashed my computer. So don't want to do that. On 19, 20, 1080, if I'm trying to take it up to 4K, so it tries to be as good as possible, put into 4K footage, that's only a 2X multiplier. 
1920 times 1080 is 3840, so um, that's all I need to do. Or I can go 720 to 1920, depending on what I'm trying to do. Now these settings, uh, it's, I'm going to go ahead and select one of these so we can see the settings. We have sharpness, low, medium, and high, and noise reduction, low, medium, and high. Now you need to play around with this because the higher the sharpening, the more noise you might introduce. Sometimes it's better to use a low sharpening and no noise reduction and then use the noise reduction tools that are on the color page. So this is something that you really need to play around with to figure out what's going to be best in your particular footage. I'm going to set this to none because it will start really whacking hard on my computer. On the audio page, I don't have any audio channels on these particular clips, but you will see the different channels. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and find a piece of footage somewhere that's going to have some audio on it. See that I'm in mono on the left side. So if I change this to stereo, now I can put the embedded channel one also on the right channel. Now, when I play it, it's coming out of both speakers. So if you've recorded your audio on a mono microphone that's only putting it on one channel, you're going to need to go into clip attributes to the audio page and set the other channel to have the embedded audio. Hopefully that makes sense, but this is a big one for a lot of people when they kind of get um, you know, into vlogging and things and the sound is only coming out of one side. On the time code, we can uh, set time code settings, the an off sort, uh, offset source. I, again, I, things I don't really work with. If you're going to do more high-end production, you may need to work with time code settings. And the name, you can change the name um, of the clip to uh, birthday and um, hit OK. And now it's going to show as birthday on the media pool. So those are the basics of using the clip attributes. Hopefully it wasn't too complicated there. The main ones are going to be setting your video frame rate, uh, whether you need to use drop frames or not. Generally, uh, I don't if I'm just slowing things down. The rest of these things really need to never worry about unless you're really mixing footage from different sources. Super scale can really make a difference depending on the settings and depending on the footage that you're working with. And then audio, giving you that ability to put audio on different channels. So there's a number of different features in here. Uh, you can do 7.1 sound and place sound all over the place if you're doing surround sound stuff. A lot of cool things to do in here. But for the most part, uh, a lot of you are going to find that you have this left channel or right channel issue, and this is going to solve that. So that's Clip Attributes in DaVinci Resolve 15. Hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, and you're getting ready to do a thumbs down, please tell me why in the comments so I can always make the videos better. But if you did, smash down on that like button, click on subscribe, hit the bell icon to get notified every time we put out a new video. And as always, folks, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.